So my name is Shannon Johnson, I'm with Tavant. I'm a product manager and I work on touchless lending and that's what we're here to talk to you about today. So what is touchless lending? So I could read you this sentence, but really what touchless lending is, is automating processing and underwriting today to get to closing tomorrow. That's what we're doing. And we're gonna show you how, we're gonna show you four of the pieces of touchless lending today. So how do we do that? So a couple of things you need to know. Uh, touchless lending is POS and LOS agnostic. Doesn't matter what system you use. Um, we are not an LOS, but we are designed to build around your system. Um, doesn't matter if we're getting it from the broker portal, wholesale, retail, correspondent, any of those uh, channels are available to leverage multiple pieces of touchless lending. So what we do, our first piece of touchless is what we call our document analysis, touchless documents. So we're onboarding documents from any of these sources, doesn't matter where we get them from again, uh, and we classify them, so we identify what the documents are, who, what borrower they're attached to, and the time period. Then, in addition to that, we'll extract data off of them. And I'll take a minute here to tell you that our models and the numbers that we are seeing uh, for implementation and extraction in less than 90 days from starting implementation, we are above 98% for classification and extraction, which is pretty stellar. Uh, our strategy is uh, kind of unbelievable. I didn't believe it till I saw it myself. So we're taking all that information uh, and we are creating a digital loan object. And from there, we're able to run analysis on all of these other pieces, the income, uh, collateral, credit, and fin decision. So I'm gonna talk to you now about the income piece. So after we have onboarded our documents, we've done our data extraction, you are able to leverage our underwriting workstation. You don't have to use it. If you wanna keep your users inside their LOS, you are certainly welcome to do that, You're not required. Um, we like this. We're I also need to really point out, sorry, uh, that this system was designed by processors and underwriters, by ops people. I am one of them. I've been in the mortgage business, as you can tell by my gray hair, for a very long time. Um, so I came to Tavant because I really believed in what they were doing, solving for things that stare and compare users, every department are going through and taking a look at documents again and again and again, and then manually typing data into fields. Touchless lending will elim eliminate that problem. So in the top section, you'll see loan summary, right? Just some basic information on the loan. We really make this very easy to understand and use. Um, red is bad, green is good. Um, and in the second section, you'll see income analysis. So again, I like pictures and colors, very easy to understand, easy to identify borrowers, what type of income they have. Um, so all of those documents, all those pieces that we have brought in, we're able to send out. So if we have a self-employed borrower, we will scoop out all those self-employed documents and send them off to get the income calculated. Automatically, nobody touches it, nobody looks at it, and get the information back. So um, if we take a look, we can drill down a little deeper in here. Um, we've got qualifying income, again, for each borrower. We're able to identify missing documents, right? What do we need? And ultimately, we would get you to automating conditions. With our doc analyzer, we're able to know that you have a condition outstanding, and do we have a document that will satisfy that condition? And all your documents are here. So the other thing that's really important to remember is if they are leveraging our workstation, they're not doing double duty and going back and re-entering it in an LOS. Everything that is done in the workstation will sync automatically back to the loan origination system. So that's our income piece. So oh, one other thing, if you look on this far right-hand side, you'll see a loan event timeline. These are all of the things that are happening in this loan without a human being, okay? We are making calls out to DU, LP, getting DOI, running flood certs, we can order appraisals, order title, and all of these things are designed to fit into your workflow. We're not telling you how to do it, you're telling us what you need and where you want to insert us in the process. So the second piece I wanna to talk to you about is the collateral piece. So certainly most people leverage DU Collateral Underwriter, and you should. Um, what we are doing is going beyond that, where we're doing image analysis and comment analysis in addition to. So if we look here, um, I'll give you a quick example, and then I wanna turn it over to Hayman. And our property address as an example, we've called out to USPS. We have a different address on the, uh, in USPS on the appraisal and in the loan data. So we're bringing that up to the user, letting them pick the piece they want, and we're good to go. And that, again, will sync back to the LOS. 
Um, I think we can just hop down to the sales comparison. I want to give yeah. you time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like to talk a lot. <laughs> so we are looking at images um, in a variety of different ways. Uh, we're, we look for damage, anomalies, um, inside and out of the property, again, and with the comments. Um, so those are our, uh, we talked a little bit about the documents, the income, and the collateral. I'm going to turn it over to Heyman and let him talk to you about the credit and fin decision. Absolutely. Sorry, Heyman. You get good. I get excited. <laughs> okay, so folks, credit analysis. Credit analysis is an, is an indigenous component which has been built in-house to understand, review, and determine what should be the credit, right? I mean, what is the borrower level, disclosed debts, undisclosed debts, what's happening on credit analysis, what conditions has to be created, what are the trade lines, and each and every lender, they will be able to maintain their own guidelines, or if they are following to Fannie and Freddie standard, they can define all those guidelines, right? We will raise warnings across borrower, income, and all those categories. Here, you can see various types of warnings which has been created as part of the credit analysis so that when the user looks at it, it's instant. They don't have to flip through 10 pages, 15 pages. It will do credit analysis for all the borrowers. Borrower information is a section where it's going to compare for each and every borrower, whether the previous address, the information, what has been entered, it cross-checks with the data which has been entered versus verified and it gives visual representation. Similarly, REO, where it compares the REOs across the system of record and the data and gives the ability instantly. It creates conditions so that you can see what are all the list of conditions which has to be created as part of the credit analysis. Talking about conditions, let me quickly introduce FIN decision. FIN decision is the industry's first disruption into the FinTech process where Reading an AUS or submitting for an AUS for the past 30 years, which has been followed the same process, FIN decision is the first system which translated, which is a decipher, which translates all the investor-specific requirements into a comparative analysis, and it gives intelligence to your processes. Right? It gives whether you're receiving in rep and warrant, appraisal, waiver, flexibility. It has an inherited scoring model which determines what should be your time save versus dollar save versus other investor-specific guidelines. And for the users, it determines asset, how much asset has been needed, how much has been verified, income, how much income has been required across borrowers, types of income, and the liabilities which can be omitted. It reads through the credit report to identify the liabilities which can be omitted, student loan payments which can be deferred, payment can be calculated. It also has a document checklist which will provide you a dynamic document requirements across investors. And it compares all the conditions, instantly create conditions and compare those conditions. Thank you. Come visit us at our booth. Thanks so much. Great, great job. I love it. Uh, LOS, POS agnostic, channel agnostic, love. The UX continues to make great progress. I do love that you can, in the income analysis and the automation of conditions, I would have wanted to hear just a tiny bit more if, you know, I know you're squeezing a lot in of yeah. how exactly you're doing the income analysis, but I also, one of the things the credit analysis dashboard, DTI, LTV, right at the top, that's what everyone wants to know and needs to know either on the sales side or the underwriting and processing side. And I would want to know a little bit more about the users that are staring at that all day mm -hmm. because I like the UX there. Um, yeah. But overall, uh, it's looking very, very strong. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, I agree with that. Um, I actually started my career as a processor and went into underwriting, Same. so this like yep. rang my Same. bell. Um, <laughs> and I think your phrase that pays is that this was created by ops for ops. I loved that because I think there's a lot of power in that. Um, I think the thing that I would focus a little bit more on is when you say touchless lending, and there's a lot of different systems that you're talking about, is to talk a little bit more about the integrations, just okay. because it makes me think like really, really touchless. Like there's a <laughs> I like to think of it as touching it less, not all loans. There you go. But I, I would but, talk a little know. more on integrations. So, run. Uh, just really, just minor kind of comment. You kind of started with a PowerPoint-ish kind of diagram flow, mm -hmm. where I kind of wish you would have shown us that flow through, you know, more. Yeah. Uh, just a time. Just it, a time. To yeah. run it live is it's uh, just a time issue, but yeah. yeah Thank you, it. though. Thank you.